Every financial planner knows that the CFP is the top designation in the financial advice industry. Actually, earning the CFP can be a bit confusing though. You need to make sure that you check all the boxes along the way to earning those CFP letters. But the CFP is a relatively flexible professional designation. So there are many different paths a person could take through that prestigious financial planning program. In this video, we're gonna cover all the boxes that need to be checked, all the paths an advisor could take to get there. And at the end, we'll review the major shortcuts that exist to earning the CFP that I was able to take advantage of and many other people in the finance industry have taken advantage of. Stick around because you don't wanna miss those. The decision to become a CFP professional could start as early as high school because the college you choose to attend can make a big difference in the amount of time it takes to earn the designation. You see, the first major step to earning the CFP letters is the education requirement. There are two parts to this education requirement. Earn a four-year bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university and complete the CFP's board-approved coursework. So rather than getting a four-year degree from your local college or university, and then being required to spend another one to two years during your first job doing night classes at a CFP board approved university, if you choose the right place to attend, you can knock out both requirements at the same time. Now the college I attended had a highly ranked finance program, but it was not approved by the CFP for their coursework. So after graduating university, once I had landed my first job, I would have had to take night classes for about three semesters at a different college or university that was about 30 minutes away from where I lived at the time. And that is all just to be allowed to register for the CFP exam. Luckily, I was able to take advantage of that big shortcut that the CFP offers, so I didn't have to do any of this. But we will review those details in a bit. It is important to note that even if your university is not approved by the CFP board for their coursework, you may be eligible to bypass some of those required courseworks based on the curriculum of the classes that you did complete during college. This bypassing of some of the coursework can make a big difference in the amount of time and money that you have to spend to become a CFP. So be sure to see if any of your past classes will qualify as completing some of that coursework by submitting your credentials on the CFP website. Once you've satisfied the education requirement, the next step is to take a CFP capstone course. Let me be clear, this capstone is not the CFP exam, but rather it's another step along the way. This requirement will either be satisfied by the regular capstone course or the capstone alternate, which is what you take if you do what I did and skip all the education requirements via the accelerated path. The capstone courses are offered both in person and online. If you go the route where your four-year college or university was already approved by the CFP board to satisfy their coursework, one of the courses you take in university will be a capstone course, so you don't really need to worry about this requirement. If you need to do additional education after your four-year degree, you'll need to make sure that one of those courses is the capstone course. Finally, if you do the accelerated path and skip all the education requirements completely, and you have completed the experience requirement, which is 4,000 hours of work experience or 6,000 hours of relevant internship or apprenticeship experience, you can take the capstone alternate course, which is administered by Kaplan online. I went with that last route, and just to give an idea, the capstone alternate took me about two weeks to complete. You don't even have an exam at the end, but rather you upload a voice recording of yourself making financial planning recommendations to some clients in a case analysis that Kaplan will give you. You can probably see now why I say there are many different paths to becoming a CFP professional. After completed the education requirement and the capstone course, you'll need to upload your documentation showing that you completed those things to your profile on the CFP's website. Once they approve all your documentation, you can register for and start studying for the actual CFP exam. If you're someone who just completed a four-year university program that did satisfy the CFP board uh, approvals, then you likely spent two of the last four years studying material that was just geared towards helping you pass the CFP exam, so you might not need to take any additional time to study. When I started studying for the CFP exam, I was about three or four years removed from college at that point. So I just studied from the material that came with my registration through Kaplan from the Capstone alternate. I spent about three hours a day for the next three to four weeks studying from that online book. All that's left to do after you finish studying is to sit for the exam, sort of. Just pick your closest testing site and a time and date that works for you. The exam is administered on a computer. I think it took about four hours to complete and to be honest with you, it wasn't all that life-changing. This was about a year ago for me now, but I specifically remember 
having to read through some pretty long case notes with the estate planning questions that came with the CFP exam because they ask you about some really obscure trust creation rules and the differences between trusts and when certain trusts are more appropriate than other trusts and things like that. And the decisions to those types of questions require a lot of background on the clients and what they're hoping to accomplish with their estate plan. Through those and some of the tax questions, you will run into some relatively lengthy reads during the exam. So you wanna be able to get through those relatively quickly, but in general, they give you plenty of time. A lot of the portfolio management questions are really short and sweet. They're like some easy statistics or performance measurements type questions. You do one little two variable algebra equation like you did in eighth grade or ninth grade in high school. So each of those questions takes like 10, 15 seconds. Once you're done filling out all the questions, you hit submit and it'll let you know relatively quickly if you passed or failed. Let's assume you passed, congratulations. You are almost ready to be a CFP professional. Now you just have to satisfy the pretty minimal but make sure you do it, ethics requirement. The ethics requirement is the final step towards becoming a CFP professional and you can submit the document after you've passed the exam on the website. It indicates that you've agreed to adhere to very high ethical and professional standards when practicing financial planning and that you will always act as a fiduciary when providing advice to your clients. It basically just says that you will put their best interests first. You do a two or three sentence write up on the website, click a button that says I agree and submit your ethics requirement. Once the CFP board approves your score through Prometric on the exam, and accepts your ethics requirement submission, they will really quickly update your name on their website to show that you are a CFP professional. Okay, so to this accelerated path that I've been hinting at throughout the video, there are some pretty clearly defined things you need to do if you wanna be able to utilize it. And I'm gonna recommend this path to anyone who did not already take their college classes at a CFP approved university, because it's gonna be a lot easier than doing the one to two years of night classes to meet their education requirements. To be approved for the accelerated path, you need to have a qualifying professional credential. And this list of professional credentials has expanded over the past few years, which is really favorable for CFP hopefuls. From what I understand, there used to only be two qualifying credentials to let someone skip all the education requirements and just register for the CFP exam. Those were the CFA and a PhD. Now the CFP board will let you skip their education requirements if you have a CPA, a tax professional, or even easier designations like the CLU for insurance underwriters or CHFC, which many financial advisors have. The coursework to earn the CHFC designation is so much easier and less time consuming than taking multiple semesters of college classes at a university to meet the CFP board education requirements. If you're someone who's considering any of those other designations, CPA and CFA most commonly, if your career path allows for it, I'd encourage you to do the CPA or CFA first and then the CFP afterwards because you're gonna be able to take advantage of the education requirement waiver that those designations would give you. Obviously, if you're someone who already has a PhD in something, just go ahead and sit for the CFP if you want it. If you're not interested in any other designations than the CFP, but you have not met the education requirements through your university classes, again, it's gonna be way better for you to go for that CHFC. Even if you're not gonna put it on your business card or letterhead later on in life, that's fine. It's gonna help you get the CFP a lot faster and that's the one you want. I really think as many people as possible should be utilizing this accelerated path to earn the CFP letters. Now that they recognize you as a CFP professional, it's very critical that you make sure from that point on for the rest of your life, whenever you meet a new person, you make eye contact, approach them directly, give them a firm handshake, and introduce yourself as Joe Schmo CFP. Even in the, even when I'm in the drive through line at the best restaurant on planet Earth, Taco Bell, I introduce myself as AJ Cermak C I introduce myself as AJ Cermak, CFP, and I want five. Yeah, come here. Sorry, my baby was making a lot of noise, but then basically I get to the second window to hand him my credit card and I say, hey, thank you for your time. I'm AJ Cermak, CFP. And right away, they know the uh, level of superiority that I carry in society. So they go and get my beefy five layer burritos right away. Say hi. Hi. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.